thousand units. Uh, we're taking ten percent because we expect ten percent of these sol of these hybrid cars to use the solar technology. And so from that ten from that thirty thousand, we expect to we're going to try to get twenty percent of that thirty thousand, which comes down to six thousand units. The six thousand units multiplied by our selling price from that of four million six hundred fifty thousand, which is seventy seventy five. Yeah. So and you're looking to raise four million. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So as a as an investor, typically, if you're looking to raise four million and the biggest you can get is a little over four million, uh, it might be a difficult investment uh, because venture investors typically like to get anywhere between five to some larger number times their money back. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I think the mark. I think one interesting thing is in this space, and it's a really interesting idea, is that the market will grow larger. And so one interesting way of looking at it is that while the market may seem small now, if you look at it five years from now, it'll be huge. We're, we're at the way of that market right now. So while it looks like we'll only get one right now, we'll get a hundred million later. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, we, but, I, we decided to attack head on as the tip of the spear to specialize in solar panel automobiles. But like you said, it could grow potentially and you more respect that as well. I can throw out a question for <laughs> so, um, and, and you expect to, to get that percentage of the market over what period of time? First year? The first year, yes. Mm -hmm. So, if you go back to the slide that shows who's dominating the market, it really hinges around Toyota, correct? That's exactly because of the company that has this technology and integrated into their project. So, in the value proposition that you have in order to get 20% of that market is price. Price and visual. Okay. And do you guys talk, do you do any focus groups? Do you talk to any of the kind of Prius owners? Because I've seen those commercials, right? That new Prius commercial where that keeps the fan running. Mm -hmm. um, and the interesting thing about solar is that although it's free, the power up is really low. Um, so do you have a sense for how successful Toyota is? Because uh, obviously this hinges on you selling through Toyota and other car manufacturers. Do mm -hmm. the actual car, the drivers, do they care about having solar panels to, to power parts of their car? Well, apparently they do, as you can see in this graph, when they just came out with the Prius with the solar. Um, Prius was dropping in April, but once they came out, the uh, amount of car for the solar and the Prius did actually skyrocket it. So apparently that would now it shows us that customers actually care about it and they would actually want this product. And if they want it, do you have you guys thought about the aftermarket opportunity? So instead of selling only through car manufacturers mm -hmm. and hoping that they adopt the technology, how about just going around car manufacturers and selling an aftermarket solar? Yes, we have thought of that idea, but you know in the first year we're only gonna be focusing on car manufacturer, but later on we're gonna get at actually advertising to the end consumer, branding our name right. as Ember, and then we're going to be advertising to right. the end so consumer. If I drive a, if I drive a, an Acura or a BMW, mm -hmm. right. how do I get access to your, your technology? Mm -hmm. right. Is it self-installed? Yes, we actually going to be coming up with um, that technology right now, but right now we don't have that. We're going to be making a kind of a plug and play kind of thing, so it's easy to show them. That's coming up later, but as of now, we are not going there. We're just focusing on coming up with our company right now. As of now, it's only for um, car companies and manufacturers um, specifically, because um, it would be hard to install a whole um, sunroof, like the whole roof of a car. I mean, um, I, would, I wouldn't expect the everyday driver to know how to install this roof or you can like take it off or anything for that matter. Like most people don't even know how to change out a spare tire. So right now we're focusing and using all our energy to advertise and try to get these deals with these car companies. So um, to that point, which is a good one. So the cost is six seventy five. Right. You intend to sell it to Toyota for seven seventy five. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think your competition will do relative to your pricing? They, they probably will lower their prices as well, but I feel like we have more flexibility, and uh, as, as time goes, we, we still have 
our first our first half of the year is to kind of like ramp up everything, do research, and um, build our production sites and things like that. And so during that time, we'll be actually doing research and finding ways to actually get an even try to get an even cheaper price than this, whether it be uh, lowering labor costs by uh, going overseas and transporting these products over, or I don't know, but these are estimates um, of what we can do right now. And so we'll actually be looking into uh, ways to minimize our costs uh, as, as we start our company. And what does the competition currently sell to Toyota? What's um, the price? 875 For the Delta $100. What's, uh, what's your best guess that will be competition that cost them to make this? To make this? Mm -hmm. um, probably around the same price. Um, $675? Yes, depending on uh, where they get the materials and um, what they have access to pretty much. So, this uh, sure is sold for $775 and their cost is $675. This is the cost of manufacture. Right. Mm -hmm. right. The cost would definitely go down as we um, go to the second year because most of the cost right now is startup cost that is going into the product. So later on, as we said before, to create the actual product is three hundred dollars because of one lot for a dollar. So, but the other fees are more of a startup, getting the machines, the buildings, the rent, and the people together. That is the startup fee. That's why it costs that much right now in the first year. This is only last the last half of the year mm -hmm. of production, so that's why we can only make six thousand units. But during the second year, we're going to be able to go full out of production for the whole year. So we're looking at around twelve thousand units. So doubling. Did you think about a year two or three revenue plan? Um, as of now, we only have the plans for the first year. First year. Yes. Okay. So I guess just one thing to do mind as you start your business. Um, Software businesses that a lot of investors look at, as well as fintech businesses, uh, oftentimes you'll look at gross margin. Um, so that's going to be your clogs, uh, subtracted from your uh, selling price. So you can do that in and if you just look at this, the uh, gross margin percentage uh, is like 100 divided by your, your price. So it would be 1 over 7 or 1 over 8. And so a software business's gross margin is roughly, like Salesforce's gross margin is 80%, all right? And then at the software, pure software business is maybe 90%. So the really, uh, one of the issues with having a low gross margin is that it makes your business very unforgiving. So if you make a mistake in the execution of your business, or if you misprice how much it costs to build a factory, mm -hmm. or someone, one of the you wants a much higher salary than you thought they did, um, it could really sink into your business. And so, um, you know, really getting that cost down, so that cost closer to the company, the uh, cost closer to the dollar per lot, is really going to be crucial for you guys to build the business. Plus, if you add to the fact that uh, your, cost of, your, your cost here doesn't include, you know, most likely sales expenses and, and a lot of the line items that you're going to need to start a business, marketing, something like that. And so, um, you know, build reducing that cost is really a crucial to make sure the business is scales. But I just take a step back and look at a, a bigger question for a second. What the, and I don't know the answer to this, what is, how much energy is provided by having a solar panel car? So if I drive this car and it has solar panels, um, it sounds like you guys are familiar with the Toyota version, um, how far does this thing go? So it has a conversion rate of 16.5%, which is an extra five miles on the gallon. And currently, with Toyota solar panel, it generates enough energy to run the AC. Right. Right. And the price difference between that and a regular car is how much? The option usually ranges from two thousand to three thirty five hundred dollars. It's a solar panel. Okay, so most people are doing it because of the lifestyle choice, not because it pays them back. Lifestyle mm -hmm. and possibly because it pays them back. It does add five miles per gallon. And a lot of people who do have disposable income are more prone to purchase these vehicles since they, they want to help the environment.